it's, you know, I hear this continually, you know, about the old, the difference between the old and the new covenants. And if we're, we're uh, obligated to keep the law, we're talking about the, the law of law of Moses, which was a covenant made with the Jewish people. And I'm going to read to you from Matthew 22. You can find that in Matthew 22. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Matthew 22, verse, starting at verse 34. But when the Sadducees heard that Jesus had... When, excuse me, when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, these were two parties of the Jewish people, two, uh, you almost call them denominations in the, in the Jewish, Jewish faith. The Pharisees were, were strict law keepers. Uh, the Apostle Paul was a former Pharisee. Uh, and then, then you had the Sadducees, which were would be what would be con- considered now very liberal. They didn't believe in the supernatural. They didn't believe in the angels. They didn't believe they didn't believe in the resurrection. So, uh, actually, the Pharisees were very happy to see Jesus silence the Sadducees. And it says they gathered themselves together. And one of them, a lawyer, and this is a Pharisee, a lawyer, this one who specialized in the law of Moses, the Torah. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question. And the purpose of the question, the ten of his heart, was to test Jesus. They really weren't trying to find out any truth. They thought they had all the truth. They didn't realize that they had were encountering the truth, which is Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. They didn't really want to encounter truth. Truth is uh, can be defined as reality, the, the things that the way things really are. So uh, he says, one of the lawyers asked him a question, testing him. And he said, teacher or rabbi, they would have said rabbi, rabbi, which is the great commandment, the greatest commandment in the law, or the great commandment in the law? And he, speaking of Jesus, he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. With everything that's in you, love God, love Yahweh, love. That would have been, they worship Yahweh. Yahweh was the Hebrew word, or Yod Hey Vav Hey in the Hebrew would be God, the Father, the Creator, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to make a distinction there because I don't want y'all to think I'm weird or anything. You know, it's just the way it was. He said to them, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind." And this is the great and foremost commandment. This is the great, the great. He didn't say this is a great. This is the great commandment. And then he goes on verse 39 and says, and the second is like it. And the word like it, if you read it here, it's just bit, I'm translating from the, from the Greek. It's, it means corresponding to a thing. In other words, the first commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, <coughs> your, and your mind. In one place says strength. In one, in one translation. He said the second is like it or corresponds to it. You know, they, it, it, they, they, are in, they interlock. It's not just another, it's not just a, a less important commandment, but it's an interlocking thing. It, it locks together. They correspond with one another. Uh, you know, even the word correspondence means to to communicate with one another. These things communicate with one another. So this is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it or corresponds to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And in verse 40, this is, this is the kicker here. It says, on these two commandments... 
on these two commandments depend the whole of the law and the prophets. In other words, all of the Old Testament, the Torah, the first five books, the, the Psalms, the Proverbs, the, the pro, what we call the prophetic books, you know, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Habakkuk, uh, go through all the prophets, the, the law and the prophets, the Jews followed. He said all of those, all of those spoke of this one thing that we should love God with everything that's in us, love the Father with everything that's in us, and in in, in the interlocking commandment, what goes along with that is to love your neighbor as yourself. To love your neighbor as yourself. And yesterday, if you go back to the video from yesterday, talked about First Corinthians, uh, the 13th chapter, of the, and what I, I refer to as the love chapter, it describes how how love looks, how love, how how our love response to other people uh, functions and operates and that's the commandment of the New Testament we have to realize that so many people want to go back under the old covenant and, uh, and live under the old testament and they say has the law been done away with I had this question especially it comes to when people want to they want, when they don't want to do something, they ask if we're under the law, you know, especially when it comes to things like tithing or giving, you know, or, or something that's going to make them uncomfortable. And I say, no, the Bible doesn't say that. Galatians 3 says that Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it's written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Why? In order that the blessing of Abraham through faith would come to us, that is the promise of the Holy Spirit. In other words, in the New Covenant, we don't have a, 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 rule bill, a rule book that we follow, and we do this and do that and check off this and check off this to see if we're right with God. No, what makes us right with God is our faith in, the, in the, what Jesus has done on the cross in taking our sins, uh, bearing our sins and our transgressions on the cross, dying, and then being raised from the dead to justify or make us right with God. That's what's, that's what's called the righteousness of God in Christ. Before the right, righteousness, which the attempted righteousness was through the law, but no one could ever keep the law. That's why they, uh, the Lord initiated a system of sacrifices to, to give them a temporary uh, reprieval for, uh, that the blessing might come on them. But that covenant has grown old. If you read the book of Hebrews, that, uh, that covenant has, has been fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled it and initiated a new covenant or new uh, way of dealing of, of us dealing with our father and him dealing with us and this is what he asks us and he commands us and I'll, I'll, I'll look on the, look at this later you know maybe tomorrow maybe tonight about love love is so important I, when I say love I'm talking about agape love the highest form of love <clears throat> agape is of course a Greek word that means it's just the God kind of love. It's the love that's unconditional, and it's a love that's based on a decision that's made beforehand that uh, you're going to love somebody regardless of how they treat you or if you get anything out of them. You know, worldly love, we'll love someone as long as they, uh, uh, or be friends with them as long as they'll be give us something we need and then we give them something they need and it's kind of a mutual like it is. But agape love is different in this. It's the kind of God, it's a God kind of love. I call it the God kind of love. It's the kind of love that decides beforehand, I'm going to love you. No matter what you do to me, no matter what you say to me, I'm going to love you. I'm going to lay my life down for you. Now this is a radical thing. But this is the blueprint. I, I said this yesterday. Jesus is the blueprint 
of God's picture of what mankind should be like. Jesus is our Savior. He's our Lord. He's the head of the church. He's the head of the body of Christ. But he's also, he was the blueprint. The blueprint, you understand, you have a blueprint, it's how you build something, is the blueprint of the way the Father intended mankind to be. And the hallmark, the hallmark of Jesus in his life on the earth and in his death and his resurrection was love. Greater love. Jesus said this, greater love has no man than he lay down his life for another, <clears throat> for his friends. And he calls us friends. In other words, Jesus demonstrated God's love. He's, he was willing to give up his life, his earthly life, in order that someone else, you and me, could have life and eternal life, not just life here on earth, but eternal life forever throughout the ages, have life, the God, God's life, and experience the life of God, the life of Yahweh in our, in our lives for eternity <clears throat> through every age that's to come. So the, the, the question is, do we, do we keep the law? Well, we do. The Jesus said, he said, a new commandment, he said in John, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. He said, by this, by this all, of, all the others will know that you are my disciples. Now, I'll go into that later. I'm not, I don't want to take too long uh, this morning. But this one last, last verse I want to read to you, Matthew 7, 12 says this. Uh, In everything... Therefore, treat people, now this is talking about love, in everything, therefore, treat people the same way you would want them to treat you. For this is the law and the prophets. In everything, so everything in the Old Testament was actually a picture of the way the Lord wanted us to treat people. He said, all this, for this is the law and the prophets. We no longer have to set a, just follow a set of, of guidelines. I know so many church, churches set down, they get someone born again by, by, by faith and grace, but set down these laws. They make these laws, or we make laws for ourselves. And we need to understand that the only law that we're, if there, or command that the Lord gave was that we were to love. We were to love one another. We love God, the Father first, and love Jesus, and love one another. And he went as far as this, in Romans 5, 5 says, he said he gave us the Holy Spirit, and through the Holy Spirit, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, or in our spirits, our born-again spirits contain the love of God. It's just a matter of us. That's why I'm teaching you. I'm sharing with you. I, I, we're renewing our minds with the Word of God. We're causing them what, what's up here and all the ideas that are been placed in our mind to line up with what's in our heart down here that's already there. You don't need to pray for this love. If, you're, if you've been born again, if you've received Jesus as your Lord, confessed Him as your Lord, you've, you've received this love. It's down in your heart. Down, if you want to, it's down in your belly. It is a matter of, of a releasing that love. And that, your mind, your, your mind, if it's not renewed with the Word, or you're not, not thinking like God's thinking, your mind will, will, will shut down that love. And you'll begin to rationalize, well, I, this person did this to me, and they did that to me, and... I'm, not, I'm going to do this to them. That's natural thinking. That's, that's old creation thinking. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That's done in the old covenant. Jesus says, he says, love your enemies, do good for your enemies, pray for your enemies, bless your enemies. So I know that sounds that's radical, but this is a radical thing that we've uh, entered into in our relationship with Jesus. This is, this is real Christianity I hate to call it that. You know, God never invented another religion to take the place of another, the old religion. He invented a new way of living. And in this new way of living is the way of love. 
So I encourage you today, take, get in the Word, uh, begin to renew your mind, begin to meditate on these things so that you, you'll, you'll, you'll have the, the, the knowledge. The Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Well, we want to understand that the, the renewing of our mind through the Word of God and begin to think like God thinks. The, the Bible is, is the thoughts of God. And the Holy Spirit's come to help us understand the ways in order that we will have a blessed life and a fulfilled life and an abundant life. So that's my prayer for you today. That's all I've got to say today. I hope that was a blessing to you. Hello, hello, Tabitha. How you doing? I'm not trying to ignore anybody, but I've got this on my mind. So, Father, I just pray right now. The Lord Jesus bless you. The Lord Jesus keep you. The Lord Jesus make his face continually to shine on you. Shine into his light into your heart and fill you with his grace, his, his power to do the things that you know to do that you can't do on your own. But the Lord wants you to be able to do those things. And the, and the greatest of those graces is the grace to be able to, to love. Love yourself. And as you love yourself, you can love your neighbor. It says love your neighbor as yourself. So uh, release right now, now since my heart right now, release yourself into the hands of the love of God that will never fail you. Uh... I just, I just, I just sense it in my heart right now. The love of God is beginning to flow in your life to such an extent that you will not recognize yourself <clears throat> shortly in the future because you'll see things turn around in your life. There's turn around in your life. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged today. <clears throat> <clears throat> be encouraged today for the Lord's got a bright future for you just trust him trust him put your trust in him you've been trusting yourself too long and you've let yourself down and you've been disappointed by yourself but the Lord says that I placed all your shame on Jesus I placed all your failures on him I'm fully satisfied with Him. And because you love Him, I love you. So with that, I'm going to get off here. I'm going to start crying. The Spirit of God is coming on me. <laughs> i got to check out. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, like, you know, like the videos. Uh, share them. You know, if you don't like them, put a comment on there. You're, you're not. I don't know. I just have a heart. I want to, I want to share the Word of God with people. So God bless you, and uh, I'll see you maybe tonight. Who knows? Who knows? I'm looking over here just to cut off one camera and go on another one. God bless.